So I'm one of those women that uh, she talks about in the book that leaned out. I haven't read the book. I have read a number of articles and watched the TEDx talk. And I must admit, it left me feeling rather irritated. So my first theory was, well, she must be somewhere in her 30s and she'll get there, you know, where we've got to. She'll get there. Of course, trusty Google proved me wrong. She happens to be born uh, almost in the same month as me. So that theory went, went out the window. On the one hand, I agree with her 100%. Business needs more women at the boardroom table. We need more CEOs. We need more leaders. I'm just not sure that that's what women need. I'm not sure that's what mothers need. And there goes my word mother, because I'm a mother. And I work with mothers every single day. I had an incredibly successful career. I'm a chartered accountant. I had every opportunity afforded me. I climbed the corporate ladder year by year. In fact, I was often pushed up the corporate ladder. And I got to the top, and I didn't like the view from the top. Somehow, I felt empty. I felt like my, I asked myself at the age of 38, 40, is this it? I felt guilty. I had all the money that happiness could buy. I had a wonderful family, incredible support systems, all the things she talks about in the book. How could I be unhappy? So like all good people <laughs> who are searching for meaning, I went to a therapist. <laughs> and I'll never forget the day that I ran into this therapist's office, probably 15 minutes late, probably out of breath, and he said to me, so, so how can I help you? And I described my problem about work-life balance and what we'd been talking about amongst my girlfriends, uh, all trying to balance career and family, asking ourselves, can we have it all? And we certainly never came to the answer that we can. And he, he just listened for about 10 minutes. And he said to me, so um, let me understand your problem. You're a superwoman and you want me to make you super, superwoman? I'm afraid I can't help you. And then began a two-year journey. And really that journey was to give me the courage to jump off the corporate ladder, to lean out, and really go in search of um, my purpose. Sorry, it's got to be on for it to work. And that's really what the last five years of my life has been, is having the courage. I had no clue what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to leave this world having made a difference. And so in 2010, I came across Tracy Gilmore, my friend and colleague, and we founded an organization called The Clothing Bank. I wanted to use my experience to lean into other women. I wanted to pass on the gifts that I had been given, and I exclusively wanted to work with mothers, because through the little exposure that I had at that point, I knew there were many mothers suffering in South Africa. So we founded this organization exclusively to focus on un unemployed mothers with the hope that we can help them become financially and socially independent. And we do this by establishing credible relationships with our retail partners who donate clothing to us. And then we use this clothing in our two-year holistic program to really help women to become self-employed. We were incredibly naive. I thought it was going to be so simple. Brilliant idea, brilliant partners, a little bit of training, some mentoring, some coaching. How can you not be successful? Turns out that being poor, having hungry children, isn't enough of, enough of a motivator to get you off the couch. I couldn't believe that. I thought from my own perspective, surely if I had hungry children and this opportunity presented itself, surely I would want to grab it with both hands. And after two years, we were leaning in so hard to help these women that Tracy and I nearly fell over. We were exhausted. We were depleted. And so began another journey of discovery, really trying to find out what are the real issues that are holding women back from leaning into their own lives. And I'm very fortunate enough to be able to read every single woman's life story who comes through the clothing bank. Sometimes they go on for 10 pages. They really gift us with their story. It is both a joy and an incredible burden. 
because the issues are hectic out there. And this is how the story goes. What has struck me over the years is that 80% of the stories in South Africa are the same. The issues are common. So the story might go like this. I was born in the Eastern Cape, the third child of four. My mother was living with a man at the time. I don't know really if he was my father. It was really unclear to me. He certainly didn't love me, and he beat my mother. I often went to school hungry, and eventually my mother got the courage to leave this man, and she left for Cape Town in search of work. She left me with my grandmother, who had many other mouths to feed, and I felt like a burden. My grandmother died when I was in junior school, and I was then sent from home to home, aunt to aunt, and I continued to feel like a burden. Eventually, when I went to high school, my mother sent for me. It was a very happy day. And I came to Cape Town, and I felt really out of place. My mother was with another man. In fact, she'd had another baby with this man. And he certainly didn't love me. On a Friday night, he used to come home, blind drunk, and beat her up. And I really wanted to protect her, but I couldn't. I was starting to struggle at school. And I really felt like I needed to do something. So at the age of 16, I gave up school to go and find work because that's the way I felt I could help. Somewhere about the same age, I fell head over heels in love with this most amazing man who told me he would love me for the rest of my life. In fact, it's the first time that I'd experienced love. And by 20, I'd fallen pregnant by accident. And the minute I told him I was pregnant, this man that I loved, that I thought this child would be a permanent bond with him, he left me. And so the cycle continues. And when you understand that, you understand why a woman can't lean into her life. She is literally paralyzed by her story. She is stuck. She is underdeveloped emotionally and undereducated. And we were very fortunate enough to, to discover a woman called Vivian Schultz at this time in, the, in our journey because we really didn't know what to do. We wanted to help women, um, but we knew we weren't perhaps helping in the right way. And Vivian helped us understand that if you've had a life like that, you're likely to be stuck at about the development age of a 12-year-old. Now, when you understand that, you also understand how daft some of our strategies are in this country. When we say we've got a 36% youth unemployment rate, we can't find work for these young people, well, let's make them all entrepreneurs. What 12-year-olds are good at, I happen to have a 12-year-old daughter at that exact time. What 12-year-olds are really good at is copying. 12-year-olds are really good at working in groups and they need a lot of structure and a lot of support. They're not able to take responsibility for life yet and we don't expect them. 99% of the women we work with would be better suited to employment where there is structure, where there are daily tasks that have to be followed. But employment is just not an option for many of them because most of them haven't finished school. And to pack shelves at your local retailer these days, you need a matric. So this can all be rather depressing and we could uh, lose hope and say, well, that is what it is. But we can't change the past, but we can change the future. And really our solution for the future, for these women, is not to meet them where we're at, but to meet them where they're at. To focus not on what they can't do, but on what they can do. So what they're really good at is copying, working in groups, and with structure. And our solution to that is a concept called micro-franchising. What we mean by micro-franchising is not micro-financing, I need to say. <laughs> the only word, the thing that's in common with that is the word micro and an F. It is micro-franchising. And micro-franchising is no different to normal franchising. Okay? It is where an entrepreneur develops a business model and uses franchisees to replicate that model. In fact, in our business, in our nonprofit, we've actually banned the word entrepreneurship. We think that is setting the women we work with up for failure. We rather talk, talk about the word self-employment. And so what we do is we develop small business in a box opportunities. We partner with strategic players in their markets 
some big players, and we develop models. We test them. We fail at them. We build all the systems and processes, and when we believe these models are ready, we recruit self-motivated individuals who are ready to take responsibility for their lives. We've had incredible success. So I know this works. We have four models in practice at the moment. A clothing retail model, a home beauty model, a home bakery model, and an early childhood development business in a box model. We've touched the lives of 700 women in the last five years, and they have collectively generated amongst themselves, for themselves, by themselves, over 23 million rands worth of profits. So it works, and I really believe this is a solution that we can bring to the unemployed women and men of South Africa to give them hope that they can't change their past, but they can change their future. So, am I living my purpose? 100%. How do I know? Because I'm alive. I haven't cried. I've cried and laughed more in the last five years than I have, <laughs> she's laughing, in the rest of my life. Tears of sadness when, you've, when you work with a woman and she's not able to take that step. Frustration. But tears of immense joy when you, wait, when, you work, when you see a woman able to take responsibility for her life. Able to make good choices because she's financially free. Able to be a better mother for her children. Proud to be a mother because she is able to fulfill all her child's needs. And they become these incredible role models in their communities because if she can, I can. Thank you.